Ian Kroll is going fishing. Pretty easy to catch. You can just drop a line in with some squid or shrimp and pull them up. At least he hopes they're easy to catch. So they live closely associated with the bottom. They're really drawn to structures like oyster reefs, which we'll find on the bottom. They like pilings like these. Um, they also like concrete structures or jetties. They, it offers them a bit of structure and protection from predators. Want to let it sit on the bottom, but gotcha. Kroll is fishing for these black sea bass, but he isn't fishing for dinner. He's fishing for research. What I'm looking at are how different habitats support an adult population. As I was saying, black sea bass is really important to the economy. So what we want to know is how can we produce more of them or continue producing them at a level that we need them. And in order to do that, we need to look at their juvenile or young stage. Black sea bass spawn in the ocean, but then the larvae drift and swim into the estuaries where they find food and shelter. It's a good place to grow up. They stay through the spring and summer, but then return to the ocean in the fall. So what I'm looking at are two different types of habitats, inshore estuarine habitats, like we're in right now in Bogue Sound, and then offshore habitats. Um, traditionally, we used to think that all of the fish would move inshore, all the young fish would move inshore to grow up. However, we've been seeing more and more that we're finding these young fish offshore in habitats like artificial reefs, sunken ships, or even natural reefs. So what I'm trying to look at is whether a certain habitat can convey uh, benefits that the fish can then carry on with it. So if one fish grows up in an estuary that offers them a little more protection or a higher survival rate, maybe more food, they can grow quicker and mature quicker, versus an offshore habitat that might be a little more exposed, then that'll ultimately affect the fate of the fish and on a larger scale, the fate of the population. I'll take a couple of them out of there and then they'll Trouble is, fish aren't easy to track. They're hard to see, hard to follow. The ocean is large. But it turns out fish have a kind of flight data recorder built into them. It's called an otolith. It's a type of ear bone. The otolith grows like a tree with rings, so you can look at different ages of that individual. And then based upon the, the chemistry that's incorporated into those rings, you can try to infer if that fish grew up in fresher water, or saltier water, or water to the north, or water to the south. And, and therefore, we have this sort of, uh, this individualized uh, record of, of each individual fish's movements through space and time. The otolith bone structure is extremely delicate. The tiny bone sits just behind the brain. And once it's removed, if you look closely, you can see and count the rings. Those rings tell the precise age of the fish, Analyzing the bone chemistry tells where the fish have lived. It's fairly new science, but by collecting otoliths from juvenile black sea bass in estuaries and adults offshore, researchers hope to build an atlas of black sea bass populations. It's going to tell us where do these fish grow up, and that gets at the question of which habitats are providing the large amount of stock that we see offshore, which habitats are more successful in getting fish past these juvenile stages and having them become reproductive members of the adult population. That knowledge should help guide habitat protection. That's an important factor in preserving the roughly $1.4 million commercial and recreational black sea bass fishery. That extends then into conservation. And that's kind of the biggest extension of this project is looking at which habitats do we rely on to provide us with this commercially, recreationally, economically important species. The whole discovery of otoliths and what they mean and what, what they can be used to learn about the fish and the population as a whole is incredible. It, it's kind of, it's let us learn so much more about what's going on in the ocean. You know, you look at this fish and I can tell you its size and I can tell you maybe whether it's male or female. But then you look at this otolith and you can see, okay, I can tell you an age of it precisely. I can tell you where it's been and perhaps we can look at migration patterns.